Hey everybody, welcome on our channel. In this video we are gonna see, what if Naruto got harem with Ty Lee, Mai and Azula. Part 2. If you are new on the channel, don't forget to subscribe our channel and like the video too. So without wasting any more time. Let's start the story. What is this feeling? Suki thought as she slowly opened up her eyes, before her were another set of eyes, unlike hers however these were ocean blue and belonged to Naruto. The feeling that awoke her from her slumber was Naruto pressing his lips against hers, nothing new. Naruto would always wake her in this manner the last couple of days, and had refused to stop. When are you going to stop waking me like this? Suki questioned as she pulled away from Naruto and sat on the bed. They had arrived in Galing yesterday, and had spent the most of the day walking around until they found a cute inn to stay at. The innkeeper an old woman most likely received her life greatest shock when Naruto paid for a room with only one bed for them all to stay in. Naruto's eyes skimmed over her form covered in her night rope. Don't lie you love my morning kisses, before you wake up you so cutely, Naruto smiled, before he grabbed her arm and pulled Suki back down on his chest. I don't like being woken like that. Suki stated firmly causing Naruto to let out a small disappointed sigh, why couldn't she just be a cute little obedient slave like Mikasa? Well I I I oh ho. Naruto groaned confusing Suki as he face morphed into a look of complete pleasure, and then she realized what was happening and looked further south. Mikasa was just finishing up as her mouth formed a perfect circle around the tip of his beep, and both her hands were flying up and down his shaft with tremendous speed, milking his shaft for all it's worth. When she was done, Mikasa slowly pulled her mouth off Naruto Jr., a small white strand still connecting her mouth. Opening her mouth she showed both Naruto and Suki how well she had performed her duty, before she swallowed it all, never missing a drop. See now that's a good girl. Suki let Mikasa become your role model. Naruto spoke as Mikasa came slithering up his body and rested on his shoulder and received a couple of pats on the head. Naruto it's today they are holding that earth rumble fight. Mikasa reminded Naruto after all three had remained motionless for a few minutes. Wait are we actually going to participate in that stupid fighting thing where all they do is throw rocks at each other? Suki questioned as she threw a look towards Naruto. Suki almost everywhere in the earth kingdom, the only thing they do is to throw rocks at each other and yes of course we are going to take part in the fun. Nobody will be able to defeat the legendary Mikasa the Destroyer. Besides the best fighters in the city will be there might as well see if there are anyone with skills in this little city. As Naruto spoke he slowly managed to get free from both girls laying on his shoulders and stood up and got dressed. I'm going to get some food and bring it up here, you two can play with each other or something I don't care, I'll be back in a sec. Naruto spoke as he walked out the door and not a second later Mikasa threw herself over Suki and connected their lips. What are you doing? Suki managed to ask loudly as she briefly managed to free her lips. Lemon happened. I reincarnate. It looks kind of small don't you think? Naruto asked, they had moved to the outskirts of city to find where this so-called earth rumble were being held, but all they found was a big rock with a door built into it. Defiantly not big enough to have an arena built inside of it though. Maybe it's bigger on the inside. Suki suggested as they all looked at the rock, it looked like there could roughly be four people inside, how were they going to have a fighting tournament inside that? Naruto had no idea, but when Naruto slowly opened the door, the only thing inside the rock was a staircase going down. Oh that makes sense. Naruto spoke as they all walked down the staircase, until they arrived at a huge open area, this was the place people gathered and waited until the arena opened up and allowed the audience inside. Hey Naruto, have you actually signed Mikasa up for fighting, or Suki stopped talking when she realized she was all alone, and Naruto and Mikasa had abandoned her. Where the hell did they go? One large popcorn please. Suki gained a tick mark on her forehead as she saw that Naruto and Mikasa had ignored her and were instead busy exploring the stands. Hey Suki do you want some why do you look so mad? Naruto asked her, but she just continued to stare daggers at him. Nothing never mind, just tell me do you think Mikasa can win? Suki asked. She better, with all the money I have bet on her winning, but you don't have to worry I ordered her to win, and she have never fails to obey an order, anyway we should move on Mikasa is already with all the other competitors, oh and I heard because I'm her manager, I get a VIP seat, yay for me. Naruto spoke excited as he grabbed Suki's hand and began leading her into the arena. Name? A tall guard asked. Igus Beepus. As soon as his name had been confirmed he and Suki were quickly escorted into his own reserved lounge. Oh this place isn't so bad. Naruto spoke as he walked around the place, they were seated quite high with a good overview over the arena, and it also looked safe from any flying projectiles. Mikasa was in the first fight, both Naruto and Suki waved to her from their lounge. First when the fight was about to start Mikasa spotted them, seeing how Naruto cheered on her a small blush, quickly reached her cheeks. Her imagination quickly went off. Suki and Cinder sat near a dumpster, while Naruto stood in front of Mikasa and held her hands. 
Mikasa I have been a fool, you are truly the only woman I love, please marry me and give me 26 children. Oh oh of course master. Mikasa was so caught up in her imagination that she didn't hear that the fighting started, and before she could react a humongous man had come up behind her and slammed a boulder down on the top of her head, now a boulder slammed down on someone's head would usually kill them, but Mikasa was an exception for instead of her head shattering, the boulder shattered instead. The only thing the boulder did was to snap her out of her imagination and slowly turn around to face her opponent. Oh a titan. Mikasa spoke as the man was about to try and attack again, however before he could do anything Mikasa sent an earth pillar right into his gut and sent him flying out of the arena. The fighting started to become quite linear, much to Suki's boredom, Mikasa would quickly dispatch of anyone she was against in a matter of seconds, while Naruto continued to root for her, while chanting about how much money he was going to win. Mikasa was really quite a prodigy when it came to earth bending. Just one more fight. Mikasa told herself, throwing a quick glimpse towards Naruto, there was no way she could ever lose a fight, not when Naruto was cheering on her. Over the speaker she heard that her last opponent and the current champion was someone called the Blind Bandit, an odd name. However Mikasa was in for a surprise when she watched a young woman walk into the arena, she looked to be around Suki's age, but what really shocked her was her eyes, she was actually blind. Mikasa not showing any mercy whatever she was blind or not, quickly stamped her foot into the ground and causing an earth pillar to shot up towards the blind girl, though much to Mikasa's and Naruto's sunrise, she easily dodged it by taking a quick step to her left. Tsuki wake up, this is getting fun. Naruto yelled as she quickly walked over and shook his sleeping slave. What is it already over? Mikasa questioned, she really needed to sleep Naruto, and Mikasa always kept her awake at night. No it's the finale and is about to get really exciting, Mikasa is fighting some noble girl. Naruto told her, he was able to see that the blind girl was a noble the moment she walked into the ring, just from the way she carried herself. Meanwhile the battle in the ring continued, rocks flew back and forth between the girls, and Mikasa was to her own, and Naruto surprised the one who was struggling. She was using some sort of trick. It was crystal clear to Mikasa that the girl could see, but how? Well for a little girl I have to say, you are not quite bad. The blind girl mocked her. Mikasa could have returned the comment she was defiantly older than her, but instead she let the comment slide, she was not about to get riled up. That little girl is not too bad. Suki spoke as she was finally beginning to show interest in one of the fights. She was further surprised when she caught a glimpse of Naruto's face and saw hints of what could only be nervosity. Excuse us crown prince. The new voice spoke up right behind both Suki and Naruto, causing them to turn around instantly, their guards were dropped and neither of them had heard someone enter the room. Oh Ashes, what news do you bring? Naruto spoke as he got a good look at the two men kneeling behind him. Ashes was the name of the elite non-firebenders in the Fire Nation's army and mostly were used as elite spies, they can be recognized by their all dark clothes covering them from head to bottom. Naruto was just happy they served the Fire Nation, otherwise he could have been dead right now. A message from Admiral Zhao, we were told it needed to be delivered with all haste. One of the men spoke as he handed Naruto a sealed scroll. Good job, you are both dismissed. Naruto spoke, both them offered a small bow before they began to leave through the door. Crown Prince little girl. A tick mark appeared on Suki's forehead for being called a little girl, just as they both left. How did those guys even sneak in here? There are people everywhere. Suki stated as her eyes lingered on the door the two men had left through. Don't ask me, they specialize in stealth and are damn good at it, more than that I simply don't care about. Naruto spoke as he began to read the scroll that they had handed to him. Admiral Zhao Han Naruto spoke as his eyes read through the scroll. Is it that bad? Suki asked as she noticed his tone as he spoke the name, it was a voice mixed with a bit of anger and also disbelief. Another hint to it may not be good news was that he was currently crumbling the scroll in his hand and turned it to ash. Apparently the great Zhao is too busy to grace us with his presence and has instead chosen to continue his avatar hunting further towards north, however he was generous enough to break a tiny force of his main army, as instead sending 300 men to help our cause. Naruto spoke with a voice full of sarcasm. Is that a problem, I thought the enemy only numbered 200, should be easy enough. Filling the enemy is the easy part, what I'm concerned about is holding the city once I'm gone. Naruto said as he began to take the city's size and geographical position into account, but his thought were interrupted when a loud bang rang through the entire arena. Looking down into the arena two giant boulders had just crashed midair. I gotta hand this one to you beast lady, it's been time since I had a good fight like this. Toph continued to taunt happily, before long the woman across her would collapse, Toph have had the upper hand though out the entire match. Mikasa realized the same truth, she was against a superior opponent, and with that thought Mikasa prepared her last attack. 
A pillar shot up out of the ground right below Mikasa sending her flying towards the blind Toph. Now Mikasa could only hope that since she was in midair and preparing her attack, Toph wouldn't be able to see it coming. However the end results were not as successful as Mikasa had hoped, no instead, just before Mikasa's fist had connected with Toph's face, the blind girl dodged beneath the incoming fist and let Mikasa fly above her and ride out of the arena. Naruto watched passively as the young woman received applause from the audience, cash and some kind of championship belt. Naruto and Suki sat in the long and waited for Mikasa a few minutes before the door opened up and Mikasa came walking and sweat pouring from her body. She didn't say anything instead she fell to her knees and placed her forehead on the floor. Mikasa don't sweat it, oh wait you already are, just stand up already I'm not angry at you. Naruto spoke. You ordered me to win, but I failed, I accept any punishment. Mikasa spoke as she slowly stood back up. Ahaha, don't worry about it, none of it matters now. Stand up. Naruto spoke with little smile on his face as he watched Mikasa slowly stand back up on her feet. Now tell me are you hurt? He spoke with gentle voice as he slowly embraced Mikasa. No, don't worry about me. Mikasa spoke in a low voice her eyes remaining on the ground until Naruto cupped one of her cheeks and forced her to look up into his eyes. If I can't worry about the people I love, then who can I worry about? Naruto questioned her just before he planted his lips on hers. Meanwhile Suki was watching from the side rolling her eyes, she couldn't even ask them to get a room for Naruto would just force her in there with them. Can we move on already? Suki asked as she quickly got bored of watching Naruto and Mikasa's being all lovely with each other. Don't worry you get your turn soon enough and besides we have one last stop before we leave. Women's changing room. Toph was standing beneath a shower, her long dark hair let down as the hot water fell down her smooth pale skin. She had a good fight today, the first one in a long time, but as always, she would have to get changed and hurry back home and continue her act as the frail and helpless girl. While she stood in her own thought she began to feel people approach the room, this was new, maybe it was the girl she fraught off in the finale, but that can't be it, and there were three people. It was that girl Mikasa and two other were following behind her, one male and one other female. While Toph didn't care too much about modesty, she would prefer if that guy that was coming in didn't ogle all over her all over her developing body. With that in mind she raised a stone wall right before the shower she was in with tiny holes in, so they would be able to speak back and forth. The male then took a step forward, and she felt him getting closer and closer to her right, until all three stood right on the other side of the wall. Excuse me, but it is the blind bandit that is behind this wall isn't it? The spiky-haired teen spoke. If you want an autograph, then scram and did your mom never teach you any manners, aren't you supposed to introduce yourself first, before asking names? Toph spoke. Meanwhile Suki had to hold around Mikasa, so she wouldn't try to kill the girl behind the wall for being so disrespectful towards Naruto. Of course, please forgive me my name is Bigus. You're lying. Toph interrupted. Excuse me. I can tell when people are lying, listen I'm in a bit of a hurry, so Spikey if could either hurry up and tell me everything you want to say or fuck off, then I would appreciate it. Toph spoke, she had managed to sneak off, but it was only a moment of time before her parents would start to look for her. Very well then. My name Naruto I'm Crown Prince of the Fire Nation, I'm here to hunt down 200 Earthbender, as well as take control of the city with a small army. I'm speaking to you right now because you have caught my interest with your Earthbending, and I would like to invite you to travel with me around the world on an adventure, while I try to convert the world to see the ways of the Fire Nation, you will be traveling along as my friend, bodyguard and lover, now doesn't that sound fun? Naruto spoke quickly. The second Toph didn't register a lie from his mouth, Naruto found him being squeezed in between multiple rocks to halt his movement, and Mikasa quickly readied herself for a round two the crown prince of the Fire Nation, you must be the biggest thunderhead ever to come here. Toph spoke hostility in her voice. Now, now, there is no reason for us to be enemies, instead think of this as an opportunity. Naruto spoke quickly. Listen uh what's your name? Naruto questioned as he felt the rock surrounding him tightened a bit. Toph Toph be Fung. The good name, no then killing me here, won't make a difference at all, the Fire Nation has already conquered more than half the world, and before long we will control it all. Now I want to be your friend and I can help you, if I'm the one who takes control of this city I can promise your parents safety, if someone else other than me conquered this city a new governor would be taking control. Are you trying to blackmail me if so big mistake on your part? I'm not I'm simply stating a fact, we might not be so different after all, tell me you said you were in a hurry, you aren't really allowed to be here are you? Ugh. Naruto groaned as the rock around him tightened once again, though that was also proof that he was right. What the hell do you know about me? Toph questioned as anger seemed to rise in her voice. 
Bug haha, <laughs> Toph I'm the crown prince surely you must have heard stories about me. But because of those unnatural powers my father kept me locked up inside our castle for the most of my life, I was only ever let out when I had to accompany my father. I was never let outside and got to play with children my own age, neither was I allowed to enter a school full with other children, instead I was forced to learn everything about the world from my room, Hel Mikasa and Suki here both belonged to me, they never had a choice. Naruto spoke as he was starting to have trouble breathing because of the rock. What is your point? Toph asked, some of the hostility having left her voice realizing that there still wasn't a single lie in his voice, but he was being sincere. My point is that the only difference between us is that I can go wherever I want now, and that there is so much more to our world than what we can imagine by hearing about it. Toph I plan on touring this entire world, and if you come along then, you would be my first friend. Naruto spoke. Finally Naruto felt rock around him loosen up, har. Naruto gasped after his breath. The stone wall hiding Toph in the shower also slid back down into the ground, showing off a naked and wet Toph. Her hair was surprisingly long reaching down to her lower back, small budding freest seemed a little similar to Suki's, though she was also a few inches smaller than Suki pale skin. Naruto thought she was a really cute little thing. Stop blaring spiky. Toph spoke as she grabbed a towel and began to dry herself. I wasn't blaring I was admiring visually, and why spiky? Naruto questioned his new nickname. Because of your hair, you fieriness. Toph spoke as she began to get dressed. Mikasa didn't like her, she was being too disrespectful. So those two are your slaves. Toph asked as she pointed on Mikasa and Suki. Yeah Mikasa was a birthday gift, and Suki well she pretty much just begged to become my slave. I did not. Well Toph let's all discuss the details of what's going to happen later tonight, I drop by your home, around dinner time. Naruto spoke, as he was about to leave along with Mikasa and Suki. There was still the trouble with those 200 earthbenders who needed to face justice. I don't think that will be so easy spiky, my home is surrounded by guards, you can't just drop in and say hey, what's going on? Oh that won't be a problem. I plan on getting invited in, see you later this evening. Naruto spoke as he with a last glance overlooked Toph's small naked body. However just before the trio was about to leave the changing room Naruto stopped up. Suki makes sure no one is outside. Naruto spoke as he realized where he was. When they all left the stadium and returned to the outside world Suki couldn't help but raise her hands up into the air. Ah fresh air, how I missed. Suki spoke as she stretched her body. Nonsense Fire Nation air, is fresh air, this is just air. Naruto groaned. You do hate anything if it doesn't have a relation to the Fire Nation don't you? Suki spoke. That's not true I can find beauty in all women no matter where they are from. Naruto spoke with a smile full of confidence. Fine, how do you even plan on getting invited into the Bifrong estate anyway? Suki questioned. I don't know, improvise I suppose, I just like sounding confident. Naruto spoke with confidence. God's please Suki moaned. Later that evening. Naruto was admiring the Bifrong estate, well it wasn't particular big when it came to his standards. It still held its own kind of charm. Especially now that the sun had disappeared and the moon was out, the light from the estate really seemed to brighten up the entire place, poor Toph would never be able to see that kind of beauty. Alright girls you remember the plan and if anything happens, then improvise. Naruto spoke to Mikasa and Suki before they came out of hiding and began to approach the guards at the gate. Meanwhile inside the estate sat three people quietly by a big dinner table, this was of course the Bifrung family. Toph how goes your studies? Lao Bifrung her father asked as he had noticed Toph was even more quiet than usual. Fine, was the quick board response. Toph had begun to wonder if Naruto had just been all talk and if he was even going to show up, yes she could see if people lied, but maybe he just meant it in the spur of the moment. While the family sat there quietly a guard slowly came walking into the dinner hall. My lord there is visitors. The middle-aged guard spoke in a deep voice. And who exactly is he who believes he can just show up here unannounced when he pleases? Lao Bifrung asked. He claims to be a general as the Earth King's army, he has told us that his name is Harry Pines, he is only accompanied with two females who work as his bodyguards. The guard spoke while Lao seemed to be lost in thought, a general in Earth King's army, of course it was just a matter of time before one showed up. Lao was more than aware of the presence of the 200 escaped earthbender, currently living nearby in the mountains. This general must be here to recruit them. It didn't even take five minutes until Naruto, Suki and Mikasa all were in the same room as the Bifrongs. General you visit honor us all, allow me to introduce myself, I'm Lao Bifrong, this is my daughter Toph Bifrong, and this Lao was cut off as he saw the general slowly approach his wife. Must be Toph's older sister. Naruto spoke as he gave a small bow and kissed took her hand in his own and gave her hand a small kiss. It's a great pleasure to meet you all. Lord Lao I believe you must already know my business here. Naruto spoke with a serious tone. 
Of course general, but let us discuss it all tomorrow you must be tired from your long journey. Lao spoke as his eyes was on their attire and faces, most of it was dirty and bruised, the armor the general was wearing, even had a few holes in it, showing his struggle on his travels. If only he knew Naruto had brought all the armor and the clothes earlier today in the village market, and then afterwards he had brought it out into the forest where Naruto, Suki and Mikasa had all been throwing rocks at it and smeared their faces in dirt. Thank you for your hospitality my lord, I will make sure to tell the Earth King of your great services when I return to Ba Sing Si. Naruto told him and watched how a big smile formed on his face, while Naruto tried to keep his own one in check. Next day Fire Nation. Azula could be seen in the courtyard behind the royal palace, she was sitting down in a meditating position, on the sidelines sat the elder Lo and Lee, along with her mother Ursa. Next to Azula was a small machine which could only be described as a miniature catapult. Their only sound there could be heard was the small catapult ticking away until it made a loud pong sound and sent a stone on the size of a hand flying away. Azula opening her eyes raised one hand and slowly followed the rock as it was flying away. A long blue lightning strike then flew from her from her fingers towards the small stone, but in the end just missed the small stone. You are getting closer. Lee spoke. Almost there. Lo spoke. Almost isn't good enough, we will try again until I succeed. Azula snapped at her two tutors. She went back into her meditation position and once again waited for a new rock to be fired, however a new feeling forced her to open her eyes, above her was her mother with her hands on Azula's shoulders. Azula you have been at it for more than two hours now, take a break, clear your head. I'm sure that would be Naruto's advice too. Ursa spoke knowing full well who it is Azula was aiming to impress. Fine, this isn't getting me anywhere anyway. Azula spoke as she stood back up, with a small pang the small catapult sent another stone flying, Azula watched it fly into the air and was going to let it go, however, while her eyes was on the rock it exploded as it was hit by a bolt of lightning. Following the bolt back to the sore she saw a young woman who she had been seeing way too much of as of lately, the usual short red dress with gold lines, her longish and black hair, those high heels. Cinderfall. An amusing little game you have created here princess, though a bit too easy for my taste. Cinder spoke a small glint in her eyes before she moved on. Azula could feel her blood boil at her statement. Princess Cinder, it's a pleasure to see you, but we would ask you not to interfere with young princesses Azula's firebending training. Lee and Lo both spoke, their statement only managing to make Azula even angrier, she was no princess, not yet at least, not before the wedding. Of course, I wouldn't disturb without a reason. Princess, the Fire Lord wishes to speak with you. Cinder spoke and gained Azula's attention. It was incredibly rarely her father ever summoned her. I will continue my training after I've talked with my father. Azula spoke as she walked right past Cinder and down the hall with quick steps towards the throne room. Cinder, if you would kindly accompany me to my chambers, there is still a great many details involving the wedding, and there is still the debate of who will bind you and my son together, now that the fire sages have been arrested for treason. Of course my queen, it would be my pleasure. Cinder spoke as she began following Ursa, leaving Lee and Lo alone in their kneeling position. Can you get up? No, my knees are too old, you? Same. Azula could see herself approaches her destination, the throne room, outside stood the usual force call masked guards, as the guard saw her approach they opened up the gate and allowed her entry. Inside she could see the curtain of flames in the end of the room, walking forward until she was close enough she fell down on one knee. You've summoned me father. Yes. I have a mission for you. Are you or of the upcoming siege on the North Pole? No, I haven't been informed of any such plans. Azula spoke as she kept her eyes on the ground. Its major endeavor being undertaken by Admiral Zhao, in hop of conquering the North Pole, conquering their capital, will be a major victory for our nation. However Naruto has been sending me questioning Zhao's work and leadership, furthermore the recent reports involving Zhao failed attempts at hunting the Avatar has been more than disappointing, therefore I'm sending you to take control over the conquest until your older brother shows up. Oz I spoke not once showing his face that was hidden behind the flames. Me in charge. Well it certainly was about time, but it's still very suddenly, but I swear I will not fail. Azula spoke, happy with the new responsibility placed on her. Azula you misunderstand me, you will be in charge as a part of your studies and to help you gain experience. Zhao as well as your uncle will be there to advise you, you may feel free to engage with the enemy from a distance, however the actual conquest will not be started until your brother arrives. Do I make myself clear? A slight frown appeared on her face, but besides that she showed no obvious signs of displeasure. I understand. I will not disappoint you father. Azula answered. Good, you may pick any ship and harbor, leave at your earliest convenience, dismissed. At his words Azula stood back up and turned around, leaving the throne room. 
she was more than ready, with that thought she decided to head for the harbor immediately, however as she walked through the palace, she came to a crossroad, she was supposed to head right, but instead went to her left, slowly her heart began to pound, until she came to a door. Reaching down into her shoe, she pulled up a small key and opened the door. She quickly entered the room and made sure to close the door after her. Naruto's room. Walking over to one of the many tables, she found her current favorite picture. This was a small picture surrounded by lots of others, but what was special about this one was the only two persons in the frame was herself and Naruto, the picture itself only being a little more than half a year old. Grabbing the picture frame in one hand she was over to her older brother's bed and laid down, placing her head on his pillow, while looking at the picture she began relaxing. While she was staring at the picture she placed a hand on her stomach, and slowly her hand moved further down. Naruto, MGH. Earth Kingdom. Naruto, Mikasa and Suki all awoke by a loud noise, listening closely they could all tell it was bells going off, a small morning smile spread across Naruto's face, first step of their plan was beginning. Getting dressed they all made sure to leave their room without getting noticed, they had all gotten their own room, but of course Naruto and Mikasa was unable to keep stay away from each other, and somehow they had dragged Suki in there too. Entering the main hall, Lao could be seen standing up while yelling at his guards, while his wife Poppy was silent with a look of extreme concern upon her face. My lord what is the situation? Naruto questioned as he stepped forward. What's wrong? It's those earthbender who got here a week ago, I believed they would help keep us safe against the Fire Nation, but instead they have abducted my daughter and demands an unreasonable amount in gold for her release. Naruto thought that Lao was about to pop a vein, Naruto wasn't sure that he had ever seen a man so angry. My lord, if that is indeed the truth, then please let me handle it. I came here with the purpose of recruiting them into the Earth Kingdom's army, but if they are nothing more than bandits, then allow me to handle them, I will deliver them the Earth King's justice. Naruto spoke with complete determination maybe he got a little too much into his role. Very well, but please bring Master Yu, he is the most skilled earthbender within my household. I'm sure that he will be of assistance to you. Lao spoke as he began to calm down a little. Thank you my lord, I'll deliver them a swift justice, but first I must confirm that this is not a setup. Naruto spoke, while dancing in his own mind. But those last words Naruto turned around and left, along with the girls and one old earthbending master. They all headed deep into the forest and began coming close to the mountains. Yu was the one walking in the front because he knew precisely where the earthbenders held camp. When he confirmed that they was very close to camp, Naruto sent Mikasa a small signal, to which she sent a rock flying from the ground, which hit Yu in the back of the head, the force wasn't enough to kill him, but instead knocked him out cold. Suki you will stay and make sure he doesn't wake up. Me and Mikasa will handle the enemy. I can fight too. Suki protested. Yeah, but you know with no bending and all, besides guard duty is very important too. Naruto spoke as he patted the top of her head. You are purposely trying to piss me off aren't you? Suki questioned while just accepting his hand patting the top of her head. Yep, be back in 5 to 10 minutes. Moving further into the forest they began to see a small fire flicker in between some bushes and trees, and they could begin to hear people chattering. However as they were moving closer Naruto almost tripped, his foot had gotten caught in a small thin line, and as soon as it snapped a loud rattle sounded through the camp, and their surprise left out of the window. The man in the camp quickly began to search for the source of the sound, and Mikasa and Naruto didn't even bother to hide, they were both wearing the traditional Green Earth Kingdom clothes, and Naruto lacked the usual Fire Nation traits, and Mikasa could earthbend, pretty sure they were in the clear. You two what are you doing here? A small group of men came running directly towards them. Naruto had two choices, kill them or tell a small eye and play around with them. Usually he would pick the seconds option, but not too long ago he got a message from his father, telling him to stop fooling around and get on with business. Look out behind you. Naruto yelled pointing towards a tree behind the men, who all took a quick glimpse behind them. Then it happened before any of them even realized it, they had all be cleaved in half by a lightning whip in Naruto's hand. It's a firebender. Another man who had witnessed what just happened from a further distance, yelled to the other as a warning. Bakasa, we will do the usual, go on a distance and make sure nothing hits me the sun is rising. They had all left early morning while it was still a little dark as they were just heading into spring, however the sun was rising now and filling Naruto up with energy. Looking forward a barrage of boulders were headed directly for them. Mikasa raised a big wall to protect herself, while Naruto flew up into the skies with a burst of fire from his feet. Everyone spread out. Naruto heard someone yell and formed a round circle fire around their camp, he would prefer to do this quickly keep them at one place for an easy cleanup. There were a few who decided to test the flames and thought they could run right through them. 
Unfortunately for them, they did not know exactly what Naruto was capable of doing with his fire, it seemed no hotter than an average fire, but the second something touched the flames it would disintegrate, which led to many of the earthbenders lying just outside of the camp with no lower body. Naruto quickly put them out of their misery. They had committed crimes again the Fire Nation true, but they didn't deserve to suffer like that. The earthbender's morale was falling rapidly while well, they tried to shoot Naruto down with rocks, however none of them seemed to be able to fly high enough because of Mikasa doing her best in decreasing their speed. Meanwhile Naruto was looking down on the panicking earthbenders in annoyance. Naruto had made a mistake, he should just have finished them all off quickly with lightning bending, now there was scorched earth around the camp, and while the chance of someone discovering it was small, there still was a chance. Naruto created a small lightning spear in one hand and let it fall towards the ground before it shot towards one earthbender and pierced his heart, instead of just continuing flying through his chest in a straight line, the small lightning changed its direction and then flew into another's man's heart and then another again. Lightning bending was a unique ability that only the most skilled firebender can learn and while they will be able to use lightning, they will never have control of it. With Naruto being the sole exception, why this was so here no one else knew, to a certain extent it was actually a little boring. Naruto let out a little sigh when the last earthbender fell. Mikasa came out of her hiding place and quickly created a big hole in the middle of the camp she shifted the earth so the dead would all fall into the hole before she covered it up with earth. Well that was boring, like all the other times, we should head back and see if Suki can manage her guard duty. Naruto spoke while Mikasa just gave him a small and simple nod. While Suki was busy guarding the unconscious you, she had a twig snap behind her, reacting quickly she turned around and ahahahaha. Ah, ah, ah. What happened? Suki spoke as she couldn't stop laughing, both Naruto and Mikasa was covered from head to toe in mud. Mikasa I told you it was too much. Naruto spoke from behind his new mud mask. Sorry, I can fix it. Mikasa spoke as half of the mud that covered their body flew off and hit Suki instead. Okay now it's not funny anymore. Suki spoke as she wiped some of the mud off. Well we can't just go back to the estate looking completely fine. We need to at least look like we had a struggle. Naruto spoke as he flung the knocked out man onto his back and began walking back to the Beefrung estate. Hey Spikey, what have you guys been fighting or been in a mud bath? Toph asked as she began to approach from inside the forest. Hey Toph, how has your day in the city been? Naruto asked. They had faked the message to make sure they would think Toph would be inside the forest close to the mountains, therefore no one would search for her in the city. You know, pretty good, even though I've been sneaking into the city before. I've only managed to see a little of the city, today I got to see all of it or my feet got to see all of it. Toph spoke with a big smile on her face. Well I'm happy to hear it, but we aren't quite done yet. Toph when we get back to the estate I need you to play a scared little girl, can you do that? Naruto asked only to get a stunned silence in return. You mean what I have pretended to be my entire life, sure I can do that. Toph spoke as she brought her hands up to her eyes and began to sobbing. Is that good enough? Toph asked to which Naruto just gave her a thumbs up, Toph also smeared herself into a bit mud before they all walked on, not much further to the Beefrung estate. When they came close enough to the estate its gate opened up and Toph's parent came running out, they both went down on one knee and held Toph tightly. What happened in there, what happened to you? Lao asked as he stood back up and looked upon the three tired and muddy people who had saved his daughter, while Naruto still had the knocked out you on his back. They seemed to know that we were coming, we were ambushed, and unfortunately you here was struck from behind, but we were lucky, they were unorganized and underestimated the might of a general and his bodyguards. I was able to take care of most of them. However some of them managed to run away. Naruto spoke what he considered to be a believable tale. Lao turned around quickly to look at his daughter. He would need to hear her side of the story once she had calmed down. Arg. Naruto regained Lao's attention with a small fake groan as he fell down on one knee. Forgive me my lord, but would it be able for me to stay here for one more night? I should be traveling back to Ba Sing Si, however with these injures, that journey will be quite a challenge. Naruto asked. Of course general, my home will always be open, please stay as long as you like. I reincarnate. The day then went on quite easily Naruto and the girls had all cleaned themselves the only side of conflict Naruto had was a few self-inflicted bruises. Right now Naruto, Mikasa and Toph all sat inside the guest room. So tomorrow when the army takes over the city, no harm will befall your parents, and they will remain in power, they will assure your parents that you will get the best and safest education in the Fire Nation. They will be allowed to visit you twice every year, and when your so-called studies are done, you will be free to travel back and forth between the Fire Nation and Earth Kingdom as an official Fire Nation citizen. Is that fine? Naruto asked as he informed Toph of the events that was going to transpire next day. It all sounds good to me Spikey, so where are we going after we leave this place? Toph questioned as she sat on a chair in front of Naruto. 
Then the journey will take me north, I originally had planned to head for Amashu, but plans changed, well enough about this, say Toph seeing as how your parents are busy in the main hall, why don't the three of us have some fun in here? Naruto questioned as he walked behind Toph and gently squeezed her shoulders. Well about the whole sex thing, you know I think it would be fun to go on adventures with you, and I don't really mind the sex, but for my first time I want to make sure that I'm with someone skilled. Toph spoke and Naruto almost seemed to sparkle at his words. That's me. Naruto said as he pointed towards himself with a big confident smile. Yeah you say that, but the only one who will vouch for you is slave number one there. Instead I have a challenge for you. Toph spoke as she leaned in close to Naruto and whispered into his ear, his eyes widening at her words. Sure I can do that, but how will I be able to do that, without your father noticing? Naruto questioned at the fun challenge he had been handed. Don't worry about that, if you head into the female hot spring, there is no guards around there, and I will make sure she gets there too, but don't enter too late otherwise it won't work instead enter shortly after dinner. Besides I noticed my mother's heartbeat slightly change whenever you are near, so you clearly have some sort of effect on her. Toph told Naruto who happily listened. This was going to be fun. Naruto happily used the rest of the day to walk around the estate and admiring the interior, before long the sun began to set and it became time for dinner. I hope the food pleases you general. Lao spoke as they all took seat by the table. Oh don't worry as long as there is meat I'm always pleased. Naruto spoke as the two men shared a small laugh. General I and my wife would like to thank you once again for everything you have done today. Lao spoke as he raised a cup. I simply did the right thing. We are still within the Earth Kingdom it's my responsibility to deliver justice to men like that. Naruto answered as they all began on their dinner. When they were done Naruto was whistling a happy tune as he returned to his guest room with Mikasa and Suki. You two are not to leave this room until I return. Naruto spoke making sure that neither of them will create any suspicion. Understood. Mikasa replied as she calmly sat on the bed with a book that she had taken from a nearby shelf, it was going to become more troublesome for Suki who was going to get bored. Naruto was stealthily moving down the hall feeling like a ninja, until her got to the women's side of the hot spring, throwing a quick look over his shoulder, making sure no one was watching him he quickly side-stepped inside. Inside the changing room Naruto quickly began to strip of his clothing and made sure to place them at a place where they would be hard to spot. Naruto then headed over to the slide screen and pushed it to the side before he went outside. What a beautiful hot spring Naruto slowly walked over to the water before he slowly slid in, this was great, he threw his head back and enjoyed the warm water while watching the darkening sky. The sky had turned orange as the last bits of sun rays were disappearing over the horizon. Naruto was able to move the warm water for a small half hour before he could hear someone else enter the changing room. Poppy was currently undressing and on her way inside the hot spring, the reason why was actually quite simple, she had been sitting alone with her husband and daughter, and almost out of nowhere Toph had pointed that she stank, well Toph hadn't said it like that. But it was what she meant. Her husband had of course told her that he couldn't smell anything, but seeing how that Toph couldn't see her four other senses was stronger than that of others, or at least she had read that in a book once. Entering the hot spring she slumped down into the warm water and let her hair down. Um, this is great. She let out a small moan as the water warmed her body. I know right. A new voice spoke up causing her eyes to open as quick as possible to watch who was speaking to her, the general was there sitting just next to her, the first thing she did was covering her priests. General what are you doing here? Poppy asked surprised by his sudden appearance. Me? I'm here to enjoy the water and I well I also wish to speak with you. Naruto spoke as he placed on his warm hands on her shoulder, sending a shiver though her body. General if you desire to speak with me there would be a great many other places to do that instead of here. I will have to ask you to leave. Poppy spoke as she slowly drew herself further away from Naruto. Forgive me, but ever since the day I saw I have been dumbstruck by your beauty. I know it's immoral and I know you belong to Lao, and while I have been fighting these feelings, your sheer beauty makes me succumb to the sin of lust. Naruto spoke as he scooted closer to Poppy. General I um. Poppy's eyes widened in shock when Naruto captures her lips with his own, just for a second before he pulled back. I'm sorry, but I feel like if I didn't do that, then I would regret it for the rest of my life it suits you by the way, with your hair let down. Naruto spoke as he looked passionately into Poppy's shocked eyes. General I'm a married woman, please just leave already. Poppy asked as she once again refused to look Naruto in his blue eyes. I can't I just can't stop thinking of you. I know I'm weak having these kinds of feelings, and yet I let them rule me. Naruto spoke as he cupped both of Poppy's cheeks in his warm palms. Poppy was forced to look up towards Naruto, his head slowly approaching her own for another kiss, she sat completely still, as his lips once again made contact with her own. 
They both sat still in front of each other, with Naruto's lip slowly moving against Poppy's. Naruto continued like this for a few seconds, until he finally felt some feedback coming from Poppy, as she began to move her own lips against his. Inside Naruto's mind. Complete silence everyone inside the huge stadium was watching him, slowly he walked forward until her came to a painted line on the floor, and with a basketball in his hands, he shoots and he scores. And the audience goes completely bananas. Back in the hot spring. Their lips had begun moving against each other at an even faster pace, when they moved away from each other, a small line connected their lips to each other. I'm sorry. Naruto spoke only for Poppy to kiss him once more. Stop apologizing. She spoke in between their kiss. Slowly they both stood up the water only reaching up to their hips, they both embraced each other, before long Naruto began to ask permission, she quickly let it enter her mouth, and their tongues began to circle around each other. The kiss ended when Poppy began to feel something big and hard press against her stomach. Spirits is that real? Poppy asked while she was still regaining her breath and was looking down on Naruto's erection. Why don't you find out? Naruto asked her as he took her hands and guided one hand to the top of his beep. Lemon happened. Next morning. I would like to thank both of you Chumigu and Anita Anjab for your services, but I would also like to say goodbye to the general, do any of you know when he will be joining us? Lao spoke as he addressed both Mikasa and Suki, while Naruto was missing. However Toph who was standing next to her father was quite aware of where he was. You wanted say goodbye to me on your husband's bed, how depraved are you? Naruto grunted as he was lying on Lao's bed while Poppy was bouncing up and down on him yes. 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 Poppy did her best not to scream, however it would be a miracle if nobody heard the bed creaking. He must have awoken some kind of unnatural horny beast. I can't much longer. Naruto declared. Poppy placed her hands on Naruto's shoulders and pressed her bust against Naruto's chest. Go ahead come inside, give me your child, do it. Poppy demanded as she bit his throat and Naruto actually a little scared. Finally her face hit down against his hips one more time, and Poppy let out a long moan when she felt Naruto fill her up once again. Naruto was spent and tired, but he should get dressed and join the others before anyone got suspicious. However before he got to say anything Naruto threw his head back, when he felt her mouth now upon his beep, her lips was pursed and placed upon the crown, while her hands was pumping up and down on his shaft. Naruto began to shake wildly a light grandfather is that you? Lieutenant 2. However all of those images were ripped away along with the biggest pop he had ever heard, as Poppy's vacuum mouth released him. Alright thanks it's been fun I'll be sending letters. Naruto spoke quickly as he was dressing himself. Naruto then quickly waited outside for Poppy to join him, now outside Naruto felt a little more secure, he needed to wait for Poppy because she was his excuse for being later, but while he stood there thinking of what just happened an important truth came springing into Naruto's mind. He could still become stronger. When they both had cleaned themselves and looked proper they entered the main hall. Forgive me for my delay, but me and Lady Bifrong here shared a cup of tea and appeared to lose track of time. Naruto spoke as he went in between Mikasa and Suki. Just as Lao was about to speak a man came running into the hall. My lord there is great news, apparently Fire Prince Zuko has been killed. The man announced with a big smile. Fire particles filled the night sky. Naruto was sitting on a small tree stump on a hill inside the forest and was watching Galing burning. It took some time, but a few hours of waiting after they had left the Bifrong mansion, the Fire Nation army came marching through the woods. Aling didn't put up much of a fight when the small 200-man army came marching in, there were only a few earthbender, and most of them was trainees. Naruto didn't take part in it though, he just watched right from his seat on the hill. Suki was walking back and forth in the background waiting to get a move on, and Mikasa stood right behind Naruto, her hands placed gently on his shoulders, she was concerned Naruto seemed down, ever since he heard the news about his brother being killed by pirates. Naruto had formed a perfect sculpture of his brother in blue flames, which stood in his palm. I'm a horrible brother aren't I? Naruto asked out into the air. Mikasa seemed stunned. She wasn't sure what would be the best answer to that kind of question. Princess Azula loves you very much. Mikasa answered as her hand slid down his back and then surrounded him in an embrace from behind. I scarred him and father banished him. I thought I thought it would make him stronger, but now now I won't even be able to tell him how sorry I am, my baby brother, spirits why. Mikasa could hear his voice cracking by the end. What should she do? The rare occasions Naruto would be sad or angry in the Fire Nation he would throw her on his bed and they would have sex until Naruto felt better again. Unfortunately this wasn't the Fire Nation nor was there a bed nearby for them to use, she could make one using earthbending, but that would most likely end up being an uncomfortable experience for both of them. Is there anything I can do to make you feel better again? Mikasa questioned as her hand slowly traveled south. Stop. 
Naruto voice was harsh and clear it managed to grab Suki's attention, who watched Mikasa back away so quickly she almost fell on her ass. Silence took over from that point, Suki stood still watching both Naruto and Mikasa, she had never heard Naruto snap after someone like he did just now, and Mikasa was just staring at Naruto's back, awaiting for what he was going to do next. For Mikasa it felt like minutes, when in reality it was only 20 seconds. Naruto with a heavy sigh, raised himself from his place on the stump, turning around Mikasa could see he was bearing a small smile as he walked towards her, and then he brought her into a big hug. Sorry, I was caught up in a dark place there. Can my cute little Mikasa please forgive me? Naruto asked in his usual playful tone. Oh of course, there is nothing to forgive when are we going to kill those pirates? Mikasa questioned as she happily returned the hug. Well now as soon as Toph gets here we will travel to the North Pole, but hopefully not too long. We take it as it comes. Naruto spoke as the two continued to embrace each other. You two really can't get mad at each other, can you? Suki asked as she watched them, now that she had been with them for a few weeks, she had been noticing just how much they depended on each other. Yo Spikey what am I interrupting something here or what? Toph spoke as she came walking up the hill. Ah so good that you could join us, I trust everything went smoothly. Naruto questioned with a small smile as he unhooked his arms from Mikasa's embrace. It went fine Spikey, as far as they know I'm going to be enrolled in the top Fire Nation rehabilitation school and become a loyal citizen of the Fire Nation. Toph answered. It was even a legit lie, most noble children who are born in Earth Kingdom cities that would later be conquered by the Fire Nation had their own luxurious rehabilitation school inside the Fire Nation, it was built for two reasons, the first one being that the spoiled brat might not be able to handle the pressure of being in a school with commoners. The second reason was because their parents were willing to pay good money to ensure their children gets through their education without any problems. Good, our next destination is the North Pole. We will have to walk through the woods a little hour, if you get tired of carrying your bag you can hand it to Suki. Naruto spoke as Toph quickly threw her bag over to Suki. Arg what the hell is in this bag? Suki asked as she found it surprisingly heavy, even though Toph carried it with ease. Amidst a collection of my favorite rocks, don't drop em slave too. Toph spoke. Boy at least use my name, it's Suki. She spoke as she flung Toph's back over her shoulder. Spiky do I have to use their names? Toph spoke as she turned towards Naruto. Well I prefer to treat them with kindness. However it's your decision as to what you call them. Naruto spoke. Tsuki had hoped Naruto's words might have swayed Toph's feelings a little, but instead when she looked over to the blind girl walking calmly with her hands behind her head, she could see a small smirk. You heard that slave too, I can call you whatever. Toph spoke causing Tsuki to let out a little sigh, why did she even care anymore, following Naruto and Mikasa around was alright she guessed, even the times where Naruto acted like an asshole or pulled pranks on her for his own amusement, but she didn't like this Toph girl. You know just because I'm blind I can still tell you are glaring at me. Toph spoke, making Tsuki quickly divert her eyes. So Spiky once we get to your ship are we doing that sex thing you wanted so badly? Toph asked and unseen by everyone a small shiver went down his back. Maybe we can put that on hold until tomorrow. Naruto suggested and received shocked looks from both Mikasa and Suki. Sick. Mikasa questioned as she wrapped her arms around on of his. What no, I'm not sick. I'm just really tired and hungry. Naruto lied, the truth was that his hip was bruised and hurting after the abuse Poppy put him through, to be honest, just walking hurt like a bitch, if this was the feeling Mikasa had the mornings they woke up and she would tumble to the floor when she tried to stand. He was sorry for all the times he laughed. North Pole one week later. For the young avatar Ong and his friends the journey to the North Pole had been educational. They had passed by many cities and seen many different traditions until they managed to reach the North Pole, where Ong was supposed to master his water bending. His faith however had been shaken, he was supposed to bring balance and thus defeat the evil Fire Nation, but on their journey they had passed by more than one Fire Nation colony, people were happy their optimistic and joyful, meant brining balance destroying their happiness. The North Pole hadn't been exactly what they had expected either. Ong was easily able to get a waterbending master to teach him, turn out that Katara wasn't allowed to train with him, though because she was a girl, so instead, when it became night and people slept, Ong taught Katara everything Master Paku had taught him earlier the day. Meanwhile Sokka was trying to flirt with the princess of the country. And then one day as he was training with Master Paku. Sod began to fall from the sky, in the horizon hundreds of Fire Nation ships lined up. Ong wanted to help, but he quickly realized there were too many, on the first day he managed to take down the weapons on four ships before he was forced to retreat, but ever since then they had been on guard and he has been unable to get close again, but what was even more worrying was they were just sitting there in the horizon, it was as if they were waiting for something or someone. The silence wasn't all bad though. It gave the people here proper time to set up better defenses, and the guards were already on highest alert. 
As Ong's long train of thoughts continued he was suddenly hit in the face with a powerful water blast that knocked him on his back. Young Avatar are you okay, you seem distracted and even more so than usual. Master Paku pointed out. Master Paku, if those ships outside do attack, then what are the chances that we will win? Ong asked as he watched guards pacing back and forth on the Great Ice Wall. Young Avatar, you should have more faith in this tribe, we have been able to withstand any Fire Nation attack for the last 100 years. We have some of our best waterbenders ready at the wall, ready to fix any damage the second it occurs, don't worry Avatar, the Fire Nation won't make it inside. Paku assured, taking great pride in their wall. Wait isn't the reason you guys have lasted for over a hundred years, because you haven't been attacked for more than 85 years. Ong questioned, prior to the arrival of the ships outside the people inside the water tribes, seemed to live a content and secure life, and had no wishes to help the outside world or care about them. The northern water tribe almost seemed like its own secluded world. I don't see how that matters. Paku spoke quickly and to his own relief the warning bells began to rang drawing everyone's attention. Both Ong and Paku quickly began running towards the wall and continued up its stairs until they reached the top, most soldiers were running too afraid that the attack was about to start. Sokka, what is it? What is happening? Ong asked quickly as he saw his friend had arrived at the wall before him, along with the princess of the tribe. Ong got slightly nervous as he watched the shocked expression on Sokka's face. Ship. Sokka softly muttered as he pointed out towards the ocean, and as Ong turned his head he saw something, which seemed unreal, a ship, an enormous which seemed to dwarf the rest of the Fire Nation warships. Spirits have mercy. With Naruto. There were multiple warships in the Fire Nation Navy, normal warships which could be found in almost any ocean, these were most common Fire Nation ships, then there were Empire Class Battleships, which was double the size of the common warships, the biggest Empire Class's battleship being the personal property of the Supreme Commander, however the ship Naruto was traveling on right now. Was not his own battleship, but instead the property of his father, the most expensive weapon to have ever been created a moving battle station, capable of carrying more than 20. 000 men and able to transport over 20 warships at once. This ship was the pride of the Fire Nation and the greatest symbol of its power. Thus it lived up to its name Rising Fire. Currently Naruto was residing within the second best room on the ship which was formed like a suite, the only better room would be the one his father owned. Usually Naruto wouldn't have a problem by occupying his father's room, because Ozai never left the Fire Nation anyway, so he most likely wouldn't care anyway, however the big downer for Naruto was that inside that room were the bed his dad and mom conceived him on, which was more than enough to keep him the hell away. Ah, that's great. Naruto grunted as he lay on his stomach completely naked next to an equally naked Toph. Mikasa busy messaging his back while Suki did the same for Toph. Spiky, I think it's awesome that you can go anywhere you want in anything, but if it's the North Pole I think I'm going to sit this one over, I need my feet to sit, and I don't think that ice is comfortable. Off spoke followed by a short moan as Suki stood by her side and pressed her hands down onto her back. I understand, this shouldn't take too long, after this I need to get back home and attend to my wedding, and after that I should be a free bird, then we can do whatever however while we wait. Naruto spoke and he stretched one arm over to Toph and dragged her close while also grabbing Mikasa's arm and pulled her down onto the bed. We can have some fun while we wait. Naruto said as both girls lay beside him. Suki you can join too, we make it a foursome. Naruto suggested. I'm good watching. Suki spoke as she turned down his offer yet again. Both Naruto and Toph spoke, since Toph joined her and Naruto along with Mikasa of course had been quite active, thankfully Toph did seem to enjoy the pleasurable activity. Though she wasn't as wild as her mother, slowly Toph's hand trailed down his chest until it reached his flaccid beep hanging between his legs. Throwing his head back with a little moan as Toph began stroking his slowly growing erection, while Mikasa planted small kisses all over his throat. Naruto closed his eyes and gratefully accepted his fate, however just as his shaft had reached its peak, there was a knock on the door. What? Naruto snapped really not wanting to be disturbed. I'm sorry for the distortion, but I was sent to inform you that you Uncle Iroh, Admiral Zhao as well as Princess Azula is currently boarding the ship. The man spoke before he turned away and left. Our damn. Naruto grunted as he sat back up on the bed. Don't worry about it, so we wait a few hours no biggie. Toph spoke as she rolled around on the bed over onto her own side. Easy enough for you to say, I'm the one with a raging boner. Mikasa go get the present for Zhao in the freezer. Naruto spoke with a cruel smile. Mikasa quickly got dressed and left to retrieve their special present. Now you two say something that will kill of my boner. Naruto spoke, he couldn't go anywhere like this. Your dad banging your mom? That will do thanks. Ship deck. It was already dark, despite the clock not being that many, great conditions for waterbenders, more moonlight than sunlight here. At 5pm the stars and moon were already out and shining brightly. 
Naruto stood dressed in his military outfit. Mikasa standing right behind him in her usual clothes while holding a bag in her right hand. Admiral Zhao, Uncle Iroh and beloved sister, thank you all for joining me. Naruto spoke as he spread his arms wide, all three giving Naruto a deep bow, until he signaled with his hand that they mare eyes. Your grace I would like to offer my condolences for your brother, a truly terrible accident. Zhao spoke with a fake hurt voice. Thank you Admiral, but we must not linger in the past. No instead I have a few questions for you. Naruto spoke, confusing the Admiral. Of course your grace, I will do my best to answer every single one. Zhao spoke with a stiffened back. Zhao had a bad feeling, he had tiny conversations with Crown Prince Naruto in the past back in the Fire Nation, but he didn't use to sound like this, he sounded maybe merry or was it excitement, he wasn't sure, but a shiver went down his back. General this attack on the North Pole was your idea, correct? Sounded the first questioned. It was. Zhao answered firmly, but slightly confused it was an obvious question that Zhao was sure Naruto already knew the answer for. And most of the men and ships here originated from our northern posts in the Earth Kingdom, correct? Yes, your grace. I found it easier than to wait for a fleet from our mainland to arrive. Zhao spoke, also carefully hinting in his displeasure to wait for Naruto's arrival before starting the assault. How many, just how many of the total station troops at out northern posts did you make participate this conquest of yours? I believe about 80% of the total northern Earth Kingdom forces are currently here. I wanted to guarantee a certain victory for our nation. Zhao spoke with great pride, but realized he had chosen his words wrong when he saw Naruto begin to bail his fists and shake in anger. Yes, I suppose 80% will about do it you know I had to travel all the way from the southern Earth Kingdom all the way up here and on the route we managed to keep the coast on our right side. The journey was pleasant until we arrived to the northern part. Apparently our enemies decided that they didn't want to sit idle by while the majority of our forces left the area, 535 loyal Fire Nation soldier had died in battle during the last two days when I arrived, fortunately I managed to re-establish the order by stationing no less than 5. 000 of my own guards to the area as well one fifth of all the supplies aboard this ship, so tell me Zhao do you believe that this was a good idea? Naruto asked again while Zhao obviously was sweating. I see, I, I must admit I didn't think of that possibility, but this battle will ensure their sacrifices were not in vain, they served their nation to the end and are true heroes. Zhao spoke, while looking on the ground, it was embarrassing, but he couldn't look into the Naruto's eyes, they just burned right through him. Very well, if that is your final answer. Naruto spoke and Zhao felt that he was able to finally breathe again. Oh wait, one more thing how forgetful of me, on our way here, we did have one other encounter, with some pirates. Naruto spoke with a small chuckle. Now I'm sure you all know why I had no wish to encounter pirates at the current time, I killed off most of them quickly, but one of them did manage to utter some rather interesting words, Zhao tell me do you recognize this man? Naruto spoke as Mikasa behind him reached into the bag and pulled up a frozen decapitated head. As Zhao saw the head, his blood froze cold, the pirate captain he had hired to dispose of Zuko. I have never seen Fa'arg. Pain went through Zhao's entire body as he felt a lightning bolt piercing his right knee, forcing him down onto the ground. This action surprised not just Zhao, but Azula and Iroh as well as they were standing back listening to the conversation, but as Zhao was forced to the ground, Naruto didn't even move not a single inch to shoot a perfectly placed lightning bolt through his knee. Funny, because this man knew you, actually he had a lot of things to say about you. Things that make me believe that the Fire Nation no longer requires your services. Naruto spoke as he raised one arm preparing to kill the begging man in front of him. Nephew wait. Iroh spoke as he ran in front of Naruto to stop the final strike. Naruto, what Zhao is has done is indeed unforgivable, but nonetheless we should take him back to the Fire Nation where he will justice for his actions. Iroh spoke, refusing to witness this execution. Right here, right now on this ship. I am justice. Naruto replied as he kept his arm up, but his uncle still refused to move an inch. Very well then, you know I would never shoot you uncle. Naruto spoke calmly, and a big smile started to form on Zhao's face. Thank you, your grace I swear I will redeem myself. Zhao spoke as he tried his best to get up, but again fell to his feet. The loud boom drew all of their attention towards the dark sky as a streak of white lightning traveled across. The funny thing is though. I don't have to go through you uncle to kill vermin. Naruto spoke with a big smile as thunder struck on board the ship's deck right on top of Zhao, who fell lifeless and burned to the ground. They're done and done, if you are dissatisfied with my decision uncle, you are more than welcome to leave and Mikasa throw that thing in the sea already. Naruto spoke as Mikasa was still holding the cutoff head. Did this really make you feel better nephew? Iroh asked with distaste in his voice. Hmm, well I don't feel any worse. You there get someone out here to clean up this mess. 
Naruto yelled at a random bypassing soldier who quickly ran off after receiving his orders. Iroh turned away and Deep began to leave, he was still the only one who knew Zuko was still alive and he needed to inform him of this development. Now then sister. Naruto spoke with a smile as Naruto approached Azula. How has things been in the Fire Nation while I was gone? Naruto questioned as he kissed both Azula's cheeks. Boring I'm afraid. It's not the same when you're gone. Dad spends all his time in the throne room speaking with a bunch of nobles and old guys, while Mom and Cinder spends hours discussing the wedding. So I'm mostly left to myself, which is pretty lonely, especially now that Mai has left for the Earth Kingdom with her family as well. Azula spoke. Oh you poor thing, don't worry, we are going to spend a lot more time together now, first we will conquer the Northern Water Tribe, as soon as the sun rises tomorrow, and then we are going to set sails for home, until then I'm getting you the best room aboard this ship. Naruto spoke as he patted Azula's head. Naruto why did you bring rising fire instead of your own ship? Isn't this ship primarily used to transport heavy machinery from our home to the colonies? Azula questioned as she stood near the railing and looked down upon all the other much smaller warships that were in front of them, this ship had to stay back because it simply wouldn't fit into the bay. Don't know. Ask father this ship was expecting my arrival. Maybe dad just wanted us to show off or maybe he wanted a guaranteed victory, who knows. Naruto spoke as he grabbed her hand. Azula do you want to join me for dinner in my room? Naruto asked her to which her face lit up. Of course sounds fun. Azula responded as brother and sister walked away hand in hand with Mikasa following closely behind. Chieftain's Palace Knight. You would have us all die for a lost cause. Sounded yet another frustrated yell through the palace, the chieftain were holding an emergency meeting with most of the noble and elders in the village, along with the avatar and his friends. The sudden appearance of the enormous Fire Nation ship had shaken everyone's morales, and there was now some who called for their surrender in hope of no one getting hurt. There is no guarantee that even if we surrender they will let us all go unscathed. Thus give them the avatar, it's him they want not us. But Long sat uncomfortable and watched he suddenly felt his hand on his shoulder looking to his right, he could see Katara giving him a beautiful soft smile, she was about to stand up and talk for herself, but before she could say anything an ear deafening shout stopped all shouting in the room. Silence. Shouted the chieftain. The room became quiet as all eyes were glued upon this land's leader. We must think all of our possibilities through carefully, bickering will get us nowhere. Now we have two options we can stand here and fight, or we can fall upon our knees and hope for mercy. Arnook spoke. If I may there is a third option. An old man spoke. Of course Lord Sadaw, please speak up. The chieftain urged happy for another's input. We could destroy our city. As soon as he spoke that little sentence there was chaos again. Shut up. The chieftain was forced to shout once again. Let Lord Sadaw finish. Thank you, I suggest that we destroy our cities and flee further inland and hide in some of the villages we have up there. We will make their victory feel sour in their mouths, and they couldn't possibly come after us, they don't know the cold wasteland like we do, if they should attempt to follow us, it will be too cold for any of them to properly fire bend. Sad awe suggested as everyone began to mummer and talk about it. They would have to destroy a city with more than three. Zero 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 years of history. My lords, we should all take a small break to consider our options, but we mustn't be idle for too long. I'm sure that their leader too is putting all of his brain power on how he is going to penetrate our wall, and we must have an answer before he has his. Naruto's room. Lemon happened. There was a knock on the door. It took a moment for all of the two register what they just had, but slowly Naruto could feel his toes curl and his hands bailing into fists, if this wasn't about life or death he was going to kill whoever knocked on that door, he wasn't about to be beat blocked twice in one day. Making sure everyone got dressed he began walking over to the door with an annoyed expression. Who is oh hey sister, what are you doing here this late? Naruto asked as his face completely changed as he saw it was his sister who had knocked on the door. I hope I'm not disturbing. I was just about to go to bed, but then I realized that it was the bed mother and father used on their honeymoon, and it would be a bit too awkward for me to sleep in that bed, so you won't mind if I sleep in her with you, it will be just like old days. Azula spoke as she leaned in and kissed his right cheek. She didn't even wait for his response as she walked in past him. Meanwhile Naruto felt his brain shutting down. He wasn't getting lucky tonight. End chapter. So this part ends here. If you want to see next part of this series. Like the video now and share the story with your friends. Bye bye.